Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. My name is Don K. Preston. This is what I call my morning musings. <coughs> Pardon me as I share some thoughts with you from the Word of God. Enjoy a really good cup of coffee, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a fourth or fifth cup this morning. I'm running really late this morning. A uh, very long night for some reason. But anyway, uh, reading a, a whole lot lately from the book by Tom Holland, entitled Romans, The Divine Marriage. Uh, I'm enjoying it particularly because I've been doing some writing on the theme that he develops, and that is, uh, his th thesis is that the marriage motif, that is how Yahweh was married to Israel under the Old Covenant, he divorced the ten tribes, and the New Covenant is all about uh, the remarriage of Yahweh through Messiah in the last days. Fascinating stuff. And uh, I appreciate an awful lot of his thoughts. Well, anyway, uh, we are talking about 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, where it says that Christ would come with a shout, the voice of the archangel, with the sound of the trumpet, and the dead in Christ would rise. Okay, well, what I'm going to share with you right now is, it, uh, you know, some people may think, well, that, that's almost, is that a real point? Yes, it is. It's a real point. And I'm going to develop a good part of it again later in more detail. But for now, I want you to consider. And what I'm about to say, by the way, uh, will be mostly applicable to the amillennial and the postmillennial views. All right? Consider this. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, as everyone admits, is about the resurrection at the time of the end, at the sounding of the last trumpet. 1 Corinthians 15, 15 to 52. Well, Revelation chapter 11, 15 and following, is about the resurrection at the time of the end, at the sounding of the seventh trumpet, which is the last trumpet in the countdown of the trumpets. Now, I, I mentioned that what I'm about to say will apply particularly to the amillennial and the postmillennial views. And perhaps particularly to the historicist view, and here's the reason why. We are told that the book of Revelation is a panoramic view of the entirety of church history. And most historicists tell us that the first six trumpets have already sounded. We're only waiting for the seventh trumpet at the end of time. Okay, if that's the case, if the first six trumpets sounded, who heard them? Now remember, uh, in the future's view, the, uh, the sounding of the trumpet at the time of the resurrection is supposedly a literal trumpet that some commentators say will reverberate through the entirety of the cosmos and shake it down to the very atomic level. Okay, so in other words, the sounding of the trumpet of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4, and therefore Revelation chapter 11 is supposedly a, quote, literal sounding of a trumpet. But again, if the first six trumpets have sounded, who heard them? How can you make the first six trumpet soundings metaphoric and the seventh trumpet literal and audio? Uh, audio, uh, yeah, what's the word? <clears throat> In other words, we'd hear it. <laughs> you see what I'm, do you catch the power of that? Folks, there's just a, a whole lot of inconsistency in the way people approach the sounding of the trumpet in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians 15, Revelation chapter 11. So let me say, <clears throat> if the first six trumpets have sounded, then they had to be metaphoric, non-literal, non-audio. And that means that the final trumpet at the resurrection would likewise not be heard with the human ear. This is metaphoric language. Now look, 
I developed this <clears throat> and a whole lot more in my book, We Shall Meet Him in the Air, The Wedding of the King of Kings. Do yourself a favor. Get this book. Go to my website, www.eschatology.org or www.bibleprophecy.com or donkpreston.com. Order the book. <clears throat> Include a note that says, you saw the offer on YouTube or Facebook, and I'll refund your shipping. Hey, look, thanks so much for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. You have a fantastic weekend. Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday.